Hello and welcome, it's Jinzo here. Today we will attempt something ambitious and try to take a look at every home console ever made. It's a rather large list, so let's get started. The first home video game console ever made was the Magnavox Odyssey released in 1972. It could play very simplistic games and was moderately successful selling about 100,000 units. When Atari's arcade game Pong popularised video games a year later, Magnavox released new consoles which could play Pong under the names Odyssey 100 and Odyssey 200. Several manufacturers saw the success and entered the market with their own consoles. This resulted in the first generation of home consoles which saw the release of almost 700 different devices. This high number was due to most consoles having games which were native to the machine rather than based on external or removable media. The most popular consoles of this generation were the Home Pong, Binatone TV Master, Telstar series, and the Color TV game series. Many, many other manufacturers tried their hands in the console business and are too numerous to name individually, but most were not financially successful. These consoles featured very basic graphics, basic lines, dots or blocks, and mostly black and white with later consoles featuring a couple of extra colours. The second generation of consoles began with the Fairchild Video Entertainment System released in 1976. It was the first console to use cartridges and was a feature of the second generation which moved away from inbuilt games. Atari released their own cartridge-based console in 1977 called the Atari 2600. It boasted a library of 516 games and many of its sales were helped by the release of ports of popular arcade games like Space Invaders. The Atari 2600 was very popular and sold around 30 million units and caused the video game industry to evolve from a niche market towards a mainstream audience. This generation also saw the release of many other consoles, although significantly less than the last generation. Popular examples include the Bailey Astrocade, the Magnavox Odyssey 2, the Intellivision, the Vectrex, and the Atari 5200. There were also many other consoles that were involved, but none came close to the success of the Atari 2600. Unfortunately, a very large number of low-quality titles flooded the Atari, many of which were games Atari invested large sums in. Eventually, this caused the video game crash of 1983 and saw a shift in the dominance of home video games from the United States to Japan. This crash also saw the beginning of the third generation of consoles, otherwise known as the 8-bit era. In the same year of 1983, Nintendo released the Famicom in Japan. The Famicom was spectacular and was entirely in a class of its own. Its games were longer and had more detailed graphics than its competitors. Unfortunately, as video games were seen as merely a short-lived fad that had already passed in America, Nintendo had to rebrand the console. The Famicom was renamed to the Nintendo Entertainment System and was released in North America in 1985 with a plastic robot, ROB, in order to advertise it as a toy. Thanks to critically acclaimed titles such as Super Mario Bros as well as Nintendo's high standards for third-party developers, the NES sold 61 million units worldwide, which helped revive the video game market. Next up was the Sega Master System, released in 1986. It was supposed to compete with the NES. Unfortunately, the Master System only saw mild success in PAL regions and sold a total of 12 million units. Meanwhile, Atari released two consoles, the Atari 7800 and the Atari XEGS. While they did help Atari claw its way out of debt due to previous failures and managed to sell 4 million units, it ultimately failed to compete with the NES. Other consoles of this generation that saw moderate success include the Commodore 64 and the Super Cassette Vision. Both had their own share of the market for a brief period. It didn't stop there as further consoles were produced. These were notoriously unsuccessful with most being discontinued just weeks after production. They include the Philips Video Pack Plus, the My Vision, the Tommy Tutor, the Sega SG-1000, the PV-1000, the BBC Bridge Companion, the LJN Video Art, and much, much more. The fourth generation officially began when consoles evolved to 16-bit. It started with NEC's TurboGrafx PC Engine, and did originally see moderate success, but unfortunately never saw a release in Europe. Next, Sega released the Genesis in 1989. While its sales were below expectations in Japan, the Genesis was propelled by its effective ad campaign, Genesis does what Nintendon't, 
and skyrocketed to take first place in Europe while making major progress in North America. It sold an impressive total of 30 million units. In 1991, SNK released a luxury home console version of their arcade system called the Neo Geo. Though it was technologically superior to its competition, the system and its games were too expensive at a retail price of $650 at the time, which prevented it from competing with Nintendo and Sega. Around the same time, Nintendo released the SNES, introducing more advanced graphical fidelity and sound capabilities compared with other systems of the time. It dominated the Japanese market, but was outsold by Sega in Europe. The competition was close in North America, with Nintendo ultimately outselling the Genesis. In total, the SNES sold 49 million units worldwide. Other consoles of this generation included the PC Engine, the CD-ROM, the Commodore CD-TV, the CDI, the Memorex Viz, the Sega Pico, the Picno, the Pioneer Laser Active, and the Super Acan. Unfortunately, none of these caught on. The fifth generation saw the console world shift from 2D to 3D, moving from 16-bit to 64-bit. The first consoles of this generation were the 3DO and the Atari Jaguar, both released in 1993 with the latter being marketed as the first 64-bit console. They were very powerful consoles for their time, but due to many reasons, mostly lack of games and hardware bugs caused sales to be very underwhelming, with the Atari Jaguar selling just 250,000 units. Sega entered this generation with the Sega Saturn in 1995, the successor to the highly popular Sega Genesis. Internal politics within Sega resulted in many of its high-quality titles never seeing a release outside of Japan. Combined with complex hardware design and limited third-party support, the Sega Saturn eventually sold just 9 million units worldwide. Next came Sony's first venture into video game territory with the PlayStation in 1994. Nintendo and Sega had an isolationist approach to third-party developers at the time, mainly focusing on first-party games. Sony instead streamlined game production for third-party developers by providing a range of online programming libraries that were constantly updated. This approach of encouraging third-party developers resulted in a massive library of over 3,000 games for the PlayStation. This business model had a dramatic effect and caused the PlayStation to dominate its competitors. Later on, the PlayStation also received a newer model iteration called the PS1 in 2000. Its combined sales made the PlayStation extremely popular and became the first home console to ship over 100 million units worldwide. Nintendo's answer to the PlayStation was the Nintendo 64. Released in 1996, the N64 did not use CDs like other consoles of its generation and instead continued using cartridges. Nintendo produced many highly regarded titles for the console but still struggled due to its strict licensing policies compared to competitors. The N64 eventually sold 32 million units. Other consoles of this generation include the FM Towns Marty, the Amiga CD32, the CPS Changer, the Bandai Playdia, the PCFX, the Apple Bandai Pippin, and the Casio Lupi. None of these gained any significant market share. The first console to the race of the sixth generation was the Sega Dreamcast released in 1999. This era saw a move from 64 to 128-bit graphics. Despite having its moments with critically acclaimed titles such as Sonic Adventure, Crazy Taxi and Shenmue, the Dreamcast struggled due to many questionable business decisions and incredible pressure from the upcoming consoles from its competitors. The Dreamcast was discontinued in 2001, making it Sega's final console. It sold 9 million units worldwide. Sony's PlayStation 2 was released in 2000. It was domineering in terms of both graphical fidelity and a vast library at almost 4,000 games. A model iteration was made later in 2004 called the PS2 Slim featuring a thinner and quieter profile. The PS2 also had the ability to play DVDs which became a major selling point. This made the console extremely popular, so popular that it remains to this day the best-selling video game console of all time, having shipped over 155 million units. The next year saw Nintendo's GameCube in 2001. The GameCube did not play cartridges like the N64. It also did not play DVDs like its competition either. Instead, it played smaller optical discs. Interestingly, it was actually more powerful than the PS2 but was hindered by its proprietary disk system which bottlenecked the console's capabilities. 
The GameCube was praised for its smaller library of high quality games, but it ultimately failed to reach the PS2's popularity. In total, it sold 21 million units. Microsoft released its first console with the original Xbox in the same year. It was the first console to use a hard drive to save game data rather than memory cards and attracted many PC developers. Originally criticised for its bulky size and awkward controller, it eventually gained popularity in the US where it outsold the GameCube due in part to the success of the Halo franchise. In total, the Xbox sold over 24 million units worldwide. Other consoles of the generation include the Neon, the IQ player and the Zavix port. These did not see much success. The seventh generation began with the release of the Xbox 360 in 2005. It featured market-leading processing power at the time of release and came with iterations to the original model with the Xbox 360 Slim and the Xbox 360e, each being a slightly improved version of the last in terms of size and improved cooling. Unfortunately, the Xbox 360 did not include a Blu-ray drive which caused games such as GTA V to require two DVDs to be played. Regardless, the Xbox 360 series was still very successful, selling 84 million units worldwide. Sony's response was the PlayStation 3 in 2006. All PS3s could play Blu-ray discs, giving the console a unique selling point and was the first console to support HDMI output in the original model with nearly full backwards compatibility with PS1 and PS2 games. The PS3 was the most powerful console of the 7th generation and received two iterations, the PS3 Slim and the PS3 Super Slim, each being smaller and quieter than the last. However, it was hindered by its high entry price between $500 to $600 during release but still sold well. In total, the PS3 series sold 87 million units worldwide. The Nintendo Wii released in the same year of 2006. Along with a lower price compared to its competitors, the Wii was notable for its unique motion controls and family-friendly game design. Despite its weaker performance capabilities and inability to display HD graphics, the Wii had a wide audience appeal and outsold both its competitors at 101 million units worldwide. Other consoles of this generation include the Game Boy Family Entertainment System, the V-Flash, the Hyperscan, the Ouya, and the Zebo, all of which were not well received. The 8th generation began with the Wii U in 2012 and was the first Nintendo console to display HD graphics. It used the unique Wii U gamepad, which featured an embedded touchscreen as well as the usual buttons and analog sticks. Due to poor marketing, limited third-party support, weak internal specifications and a non-impressive lineup of launch titles, the Wii U suffered very low sales resulting in a total of just 13 million units shipped worldwide. The Xbox One was released the following year in 2013. It was marketed as an all-in-one entertainment system, hence its name. The Xbox One received two major iterations, the Xbox One S and the Xbox One X, featuring improved performance and the ability to play 4K movies unique to the Xbox. Unfortunately, due to a weaker lineup of exclusive titles for the system, it underperformed. So far, the Xbox One has sold 40 million units, with its successor, codename Xbox Project Scarlet, to be released in 2020. The PS4 was also released in 2013. The PS4 demonstrated the generation's focus on increased connectivity with the ability to play games off console on the PS Vita and the ability to stream gameplay online. The PS4 received two iterations, the PS4 Slim and the PS4 Pro, offering improved performance over the original. It dominated the 8th generation due to its whole slew of exclusive titles and has sold 100 million units so far. The sequel to the PS4 will be the PS5, planned for release in 2020. Nintendo released another console for this generation with the Nintendo Switch in 2017. Its main feature is the ability to switch between playing on the TV and playing in handheld mode. Although weaker in specifications compared to its competition, the hybrid console has had incredible success due to its wide audience appeal and impressive selection of exclusive games. Its controllers can also be used in a multitude of ways allowing for a unique local multiplayer experience. In just two years, the Switch has sold over 40 million units so far and may be on target to outsell even the PS4. Soon we will see what the ninth generation of consoles have to offer with the Xbox Scarlet and PS5. 
So far, we have been promised SSDs that will allow up to 20 times faster loading times compared to current generation consoles and dramatically increased rendering speeds. The Google Stadia will also be released soon, which is Google's attempt at a gaming device with its uniqueness being a streaming service that promises high performance without the need of physical hardware. Who do you think will triumph in the ninth generation of consoles? Let me know in the comments below. With that said, this marks the end of the video. Thank you for taking the time to watch my content, and until next time, Jinzo out.